Hey everybody, my name is Michael Gatewood, <clears throat> and I would um, like to let you know that I'm doing a little uh, hangout for um, great food photography, and I want to go over a few things. Now, I'm going to leave this open for people to come in, and if uh, we need to, maybe even take a look at uh, some uh, Q&A. So I've turned on Q&A here in case anybody wants to join in and uh, ask any questions. But the first thing I want to do is talk about food photography. Now my name is Michael Gatewood and I'm a professional food photographer with Getty Images and I also photograph a lot of different restaurants and catalogs and things of that nature. I've had a lot of, well, food photographs and all kinds of major magazines. But you know, let's get over that and let's talk about how to create food photographs. First of all, no, you don't take your cell phone and start shooting photographs of food that you just are about to eat at a restaurant and expect anybody to look at it, want to eat it, uh, be enticed by it. Because I got to tell you something, I have seen that stuff and it's hideous. Now, the first thing that I need to let you know is that if you want professional food photographs, you don't want to shoot with cell phone. It shoots in JPEG. You should be shooting with a digital SLR. You should be shooting in raw format. You should make sure that you have professional lighting or beautiful natural light. And regardless, I mean, there's a lot of things involved. I've got $10,000 worth of strobes to uh, get great shots. Um, I use reflectors and mirrors and all kinds of things to be able to make that happen. Now, one thing is, that, well, one thing, I'm a organic food photographer. At least that's the phrase I like to use to say that whatever I photograph, you could eat. And I'm not going to put a bunch of garbage on there. I'm not going to, in essence, do false advertising. I want to have a great, um, you know, well, great food from a chef, from a restaurant, even from myself if I want to set up a great shot. These are the things that I'd want to do to get started. Now, lighting, let's talk about it. Lighting the front from a flash from a camera, that's about the worst thing I can imagine doing. Um, in essence, your food looks like uh, it's about to get hit by traffic. <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to um, want to take an opportunity to backlight this or light it from the top or light it from window light. Um, not too much as far as the lighting goes. One one directional light is fine, uh, but reflecting that light where you want it's also important, whether it's with mirrors or reflectors or with cards or whatever. And a black flag, um, black card to kind of diffuse light or absorb light in areas that you want to absorb it. Here, let's start by sharing my screen and the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, go in share my screen and uh, let's do this with uh, Adobe Bridge and uh, let's go ahead and share that alright real quick um, photographs of blueberries done on a piece of what we call barn siding well wood like a table depth of field incredibly and I mean incredibly shallow and that, by all means, is the way to go with that. Here, I'm uh, going through. I'm using Adobe Bridge to be able to view a few shots. Let's see what I have in this folder before I go elsewhere. After that, uh, oh, and man, tons and tons and tons of photos. All right. I go to farmer's markets all the time, and I snap off quick shots of the vegetables. Again, this is more natural light. I have a feeling I had some camera shake on a couple of these because I was hand holding and hand holding is not the way to photograph food. Uh, squash, not bad. Oh gosh, can't even remember. Let's see, like a beet. It's terrible. I photograph food all the time and I can't remember what I photographed. The string beans, yeah, definitely sold for stock, I remember. Some nice tomatoes saturated with red. That works fine. And I do know I've got these peaches out there. 
those are pretty cool and again we're just going in and grabbing some shots these shots of peanuts were excellent you know I love the fact that it was in this green Tupperware bowl and it looked fantastic again going with some basic rough lighting natural light that was available at the time let's scrub down here and let's see if we've got anything else in this folder before we go elsewhere I'm gonna go back to essentials view and and being able to go to Essentials view, let's go in here and let's uh, see what else we've got. In here also, I photographed some yogurt. Let's go into some finals and some finals that were actually set up uh, to uh, be able to, well, send to a client. This was one of the tougher shots that I remember shooting and the fact that in less than about 10 seconds it turned milky and really if it doesn't have a little bit of crystal like um, almost crystallized on the edge then you're shot. If the second it goes milky you're in a bad spot. I, again I went in and photographed a couple of these shots. This vanilla looks pretty cool although I had to bend it a little bit and ended up turning it into what looks almost like a swan uh, the tip just bent beyond belief. Uh, uh, the owner of the yogurt company was giving me the samples and she was trying her hardest, but I gotta tell you something. I mean, I was getting a disaster submitted to me and I've, I'm, I'm going, this is, this is not ending well. Here, I'll, uh, back out of that going back into essentials view real quick keep moving this back and forth a little bit just to make sure I'm still in screen view now going in here let's uh, let's see what else we've got going in here let's go into final view then I'm going to pop over to film strip view to give you guys a little look of well a little larger size I photographed this bread again backlit and um, shots, I shot both vertical and horizontal. And one thing I did notice in shooting that I ended up with a huge reflection in the oil, the dipping oil that was actually provided. And in that, and let's see if we can get in here. Yeah, it's taking its own sweet time in being able to um, actually get into focus. Here, let's see if we can do this a little better. And um, here, since both of those are giving me a headache, just to let you know, we definitely had reflection problems in the oil, and that required a huge amount of cloning to be able to make that work. Now, let's see if we can go back to vertical. Yep, finally refreshed. Now, again huge amount of reflection in here creating a major problem but the light source is in the back and really dulls and just kind of reflects the light back into the grain of the bread which worked out fine this cheesecake it still needs some work in the fact that we also have a little bit of a perspective problem a little twist would be nice to get things a little more vertical and some chroming on the plate still needs to be taken care of but overall not a bad lighting deal again a lot of times when I put a plate down or a fork down sometimes I put paper in here to break up the color one thing on a few of the shots you can see that in these cookies the angle that I took just didn't seem as appetizing as the angle of shooting directly above with these cookies and that's the shot that I like the most and that's actually been a good downloader for me for uh, stock photography never be afraid to crop off a little pizza get in a little close we know it's a round pizza we know that we're going to be seeing the rest of that pizza if we could if we didn't have this crop one thing about pizza incredibly in minutes it congeals. The, you, you can tell. In fact, in the time it took to shoot this, we ended up with the the um, spinach leaf that's in there uh, kind of starting to wilt. A uh, lot of different shots. This eclair sh actually lit from the top maybe too much light. 
the you know it's hard to tell a texture of the chocolate all those different things can create problems I've always done well by shooting uh, well cannoli and uh, these are dead on as far as cannoli goes I gotta tell you something I love shooting dessert <clears throat> and being an organic food photographer and one that uh, doesn't jazz it up with a lot of ingredients you can't eat it's always nice to be able to eat it afterwards that I will share going in here we've got like I said a lot of different options now I'm gonna go into another little grouping that I have and again I'm kind of dipping down a bit to see if we've got what we're looking for as far as screen share goes now in taking a look at this again the lighting on this was shot more from the top down mainly because of the well the coffee or the mocha that we have in there again provided by the owner of the coffee shop allowed me to be able to kind of get a swirl a more experienced barista could have given me a better looking top on this and so there again a food stylist is definitely a necessity I noticed in here that there's some cleaning that needs to be done and again Photoshop can do a wonderful job with that but uh, the angle looks pretty good and the crop is pretty nice on this one thing on a couple of these shots in fact on the Philly cheesesteak Philly cheesesteak is probably one of the hardest things to make appetizing yet is an appetizing sandwich I faded off the plate just a bit to get the look that I wanted and this is high key white so we're dealing with the ability to be able to put copy and logos around and about but again the cheese in no time at all can start to look congealed but I did enjoy the exactly the way this kind of faded off and I think it looks nice sandwich good contrast good golden hue on the bread and there again a reflection shot with lighting on the top coming down now as far as what kind of shot that we want to do aperture priority might be our best bet with this and setting an aperture priority of let's say right around f16 maybe to f8 but there again we're looking at definitely putting this on timer mode because when we click we don't want to touch that shutter so we want it to go off in let's say two or three seconds because for sure no camera shake definitely looking at having a tripod with this deal and we're also looking at wanting to go in and um, um, having a certain amount of exposure for this that's going to be a little bit longer definitely longer than hand holding would allow and being shot in raw format we've got 10 f-stops of being able to adjust where with JPEG three tops before it just falls apart and not to mention about a hundred ISO we want to really watch out for film grain this particular shot was very appetizing coming in close we can see great focal point right up here at the corner right on the edge of this and again good exposure on this believe it or not not a lot of color in this but one of my favorite shots this lobster tail pastry has great texture in the whipped cream and I can see the graininess I can see all the texture and I see no blowout this is something that I would definitely look for if I see blowout in the whipped cream then I know the exposure is incorrect again good lighting on this little powdered sugar action recently a food magazine gave me some images to critique and one was of carrot cake it was the most hideous shots of carrot cake having the writers actually take the photographs with their cell phones and then put it into a food magazine 
and I thought, oh my gosh, this is not the way to do it. Just a terrible idea. But now what we have is we have this cheesecake, or excuse me, carrot cake. We have a great texture right on the carrot cake, and I see the color that I'm looking for. I love the fact it's darker here than here. So the light source is wonderful. The cream cheese icing not blown out and not even a blowout in the little coconut flakes that are on the top. This is a good shot of cheesecake. Whether you like the angle or not, whether it needs a fork or not, it is a, you know, it's just a fantastic shot. And of course, we can go with salads, basic salads. One of the things I don't like about this, not showing enough lettuce, and I don't think it made the cut. And uh, let's see, oh, sausage, a sausage sandwich. Now I got to tell you, we threw some color on the plate, a little bling. But really what we've got here is a real challenge because sausage on a roll, very dull, very dull in color and can be very, very tricky. I made a huge mistake on this Cuban. Overall, this would have been a great shot and interesting with the pickle and everything else. I shot one. Never shoot a sandwich one time and not at least cut it in half and split it if it isn't already to show the interior part of the sandwich. It's one sandwich on a French roll with no other options. Now this Italian, I should have did the same thing. It's a better shot than the Cuban, but I got to tell you something. It would have been an even cooler shot cut in half and then apply a side. Also, never have the sides in front of the sandwich when you're shooting. Remember, the light source needs to be from the back. That Never put the side as a focal point in the front part of the, let's say, a sandwich. But having the chips in the back is a nice garnish. Always look for some color to be able to spice it up a little bit. Being an organic food photographer, I'm not throwing a bunch of items, a bunch of sesame seeds and other things. But these are good solid food shots, ways in which you can take a look at what you need for being able to go in and shoot, let's say, your menu. Always take advantage of people with skills, people that have experience in these different uh, shots and programs to be able to make that or to get their advice so that you don't suffer in a situation. I've been doing this a while and food photography is a tough gig. It is difficult to do and without the proper knowledge you can end up costing yourself. They say one of the most risky businesses to get into is food photography and I believe you. I believe it. I see it all the time. I see restaurants that use cheap product and stuff out of cans and dump it on the plate and wonder why in the world nobody wants to go to their restaurant to eat. You know, you go to a restaurant because the food's better than you can cook at home. When you go and you create a Facebook ad and you photograph it with your cell phone, put it up there for people to look at and you wonder why they don't come to your restaurant or when they come through the restaurant and they're trying to order something and they look on the wall or they look at the menu and it's not appetizing they may order once and if the food doesn't back it up with just incredible taste and flavor then they're not coming back now I don't want to deceive people. My food photography is not to deceive, it's to entice. If you're going to put stuff on Facebook, it better look good. You better put your you know, best foot forward. Um, pay for professional photography. Um, shoot it yourself, but at least understand what it takes to create beautiful food. And for photographers out there, buying an expensive camera doesn't make you a food photographer. 
you need to spend time building your and understanding your trade and um, hopefully it'll be a success for you. We're going to be doing a few Google um, Hangouts and this is also going up to YouTube. <clears throat> I really want you to take advantage of these and I'll be pulling together a group so that the next few times we can get dialogue and get new people but right now we're testing the waters and we're seeing how these help outs will work and what's gonna happen with these and see if we can get a group of people together to have dialogue and interest in a technique or a wanna learn and I of course would like to learn from others as well as give you my advice. Um, I always crave knowledge and want to build my skills and put my skills to the test and hopefully this will be helpful to you. My name is Michael Gatewood and this is one of our first um, hangouts and this was on food photography. Everybody, thanks for watching. This will also be on YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.